Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, I'm going to be going over the three remaining unreleased armored vehicles that are going to be added into Grand Theft Auto Online. We're going to be doing some sort of durability test, seeing how many explosives it can take, what its bulletproof resistance is like in terms of its armor and windows, and so much more. So a good chunk of the remaining vehicles are pretty civilian, supercars, sports classics, but there's three in particular, the Nightshade, the Insurgent Pick up custom and the technical custom that are our remaining armored vehicles and today we're going to be doing a durability test seeing how these vehicles stand out to some of the things you'll encounter in Los Santos. All right, so let's start with the Nightshade, and these vehicles are non-upgraded. They don't have any modifications on them at all in terms of armor or anything like that. And here we go. So it's like I predicted in that the Nightshade can take two sticky bombs before the third one ends up exploding it. So it's a little bit weaker than the Insurgent, at least the previous ones that we've seen in the game. And then the exact same thing can be said for the RPG test. I assume those explosives are the exact same thing, but I just wanted to test to make sure it can survive two RPGs with the third one ultimately destroying it. So you're good for two explosions and then the third one is going to take it out. And then I wanted to do the minigun test to see exactly how many rounds from a weapon it would take to destroy this vehicle. So we started with a thousand rounds and it blew up just around 517 rounds. So a little under 500 bullets is what it's going to take for this vehicle to blow up. So the armor protection is actually pretty good on this, uh, but I think it still puts it worse than a lot of the other vehicles we've seen, at least the armored ones in the past. However, that was non-upgraded, so now what I'm going to do is have a fully upgraded to the max with its highest armor ability, highest chassis upgrade, like all the plates you see on the windows, and now we're going to do the exact same test. So with the armor upgrade and with the plating upgrade, it can actually survive an additional explosion. So now instead of blowing up on the third sticky bomb, it now blows up on the fourth, which is pretty cool. Same with the RPG. Instead of blowing up on the third RPG, it now blows up on the fourth RPG. So when you upgrade the armor and when you upgrade the armor plating that I have on here, these cars are spawned in in single player, just fully upgraded. It can survive one extra explosive, which in the middle of the firefight could actually save your life. And then we're going to go into the minigun test as well. So you can see we started with a thousand rounds and it ends up taking close to a thousand rounds to blow it up. So essentially by adding the armor and the plating, you're buying yourself another 350 to 450 rounds that your vehicle can take before it ends up exploding. So the bottom line here is upgrade your car, especially the Night Shark with not only the armor and the LSC, but the armor plating as well, as it certainly does help. And we're gonna see that a little bit later. Now, one thing I was a little bit disappointed in with the Night Shark is its bulletproof resistance, which is pretty much none. So the windows are really wide by default. So without any of the extra armor plating on there, you're you're going to be really exposed. One shot would completely kill someone sitting in the passenger or the driver's seat. And even with the standard pistol bullets, it only took three or four or five shots before the windshield was completely compromised. So really poor on that. And even with the cosmetic armor bonuses, like the things you can see on the windows and the armor plating, it still didn't do anything as far as the protection of the windshield. In fact, I don't even think that armor plating on the window does anything. Now this might be a glitch, but this is something I figured out. Even if you shoot the additional armor plating, you still get like the window cracking thing over top of it. So I wonder if it's literally just for aesthetics and doesn't actually provide any protection. The only protection it might provide is an illusion, like cover. So it will be physically harder to see your character inside, thus might making it difficult for enemies to kill you. However, as far as providing protection goes, it doesn't seem as if it does any of that, as you're able to just shoot right through it, and the glass shattered no problem, even with that extra armor plating. But that has me a little bit worried as far as this vehicle goes, the Night Shark, in terms of its ability to protect its players while sitting on the inside. But I still do think this car is going to be incredibly cool and I know that it's going to have a lot of people interested in it especially because it can do a lot of awesome things like seat for people it can haul the anti-aircraft trailer which is going to be a huge appeal to a lot of players that are looking for a fast armored vehicle like this okay time for the insurgent pickup custom so I did the exact same test here we lined up three unarmored cars so this is straight 
out of the box, like if you were to just get this by default with no upgrades, it can survive two sticky bombs before being blown up by the third. So one sticky bomb, two sticky bombs won't blow it up, but the third will. We move on to the RPG test, the exact same thing. It can survive two RPGs where the third one ends up blowing it up. Again, I think the explosions are the same, but for whatever reason, I just wanted to test them to be sure. And then if we get on to the minigun test, again, we're starting with about 9,000 rounds here, and this vehicle blows up close to around 8,346. So it was around 650 rounds that it took with no armor to end up blowing up this vehicle. So now let's do the exact same test, but with armor. Now what we've done with this one is upgraded these vehicles fully, but the Insurgent Pickup Custom has three tiers of armor. It has light, medium, and heavy. So each one of these vehicles has a different armor setting. The vehicle that we're gonna be starting with first has the light armor on, and does it make any difference how many sticky bombs we can throw at it? It does, the Insurgent Pickup Custom can actually survive one additional explosion. So instead of blowing up on the third, it now blows up and the heavy ones, well, the answer to that is unfortunately no. So it looks as if it's going to be cosmetic. There is not going to be a single bit of difference that it does once you fully upgrade this vehicle. But now let's figure out if those chassis upgrades do anything for the Insurgent Custom in terms of its bullet resistance. So the answer to that is still unfortunately no. Now it does look like the Insurgent Custom has better bulletproof or bullet resistant windows than the Night Shark. As you can see by just these sheer amounts of rounds that I'm putting through the windscreen right here, it's way more than what we had with the Night Shark. So you are gonna be at least getting a little bit of better protection from the windows on the Insurgent Custom, especially on the side. The side took a really long time to break. And I also do believe that the armor plating, especially on the heaviest one for the Insurgent Custom, is really overpowered. So as I mentioned, I think the chassis upgrades, the biggest thing they're gonna provide is an illusion for other players, where it'll be near impossible to see your character on the inside, making it very difficult to pick out where you are and then put an accurate shot on your character. But regardless, by default, the windows on the Insurgent Custom are still way stronger than what we saw on the Night Shark. I had to end up taking out like an MG in order to finally finish off the windows right there. That is the heavy armor. And the same thing can be said about the medium armor too. Even though it doesn't provide the exact same amount of coverage, those bars still camouflage you pretty well well the way they kind of go across the windscreen and the windows however you still are way more exposed with the medium so the jump to heavy is going to be definitely one that i think is going to be incredibly worthwhile on this car and then you've got the light which is by far the most interesting one. It's basically just a mesh screen, but I noticed some weird glitches with the light one where the windscreen would actually shatter instantly. Like there was no glass breaking animation. It would just break on contact, which was really, really weird. So the second I would shoot it, it would instantly sort of vanish and then change colors. It was very strange. So I'm not exactly sure what sort of protection the light offers, but regardless, once you break through that original kind of uh, barrier, you're not gonna have much protection there. So just like the Night Shark, the Insurgent Customs chassis upgrades are only going to be there for aesthetics, kind of deception or illusion, and then cosmetics and the way you want your vehicle to ultimately look. However, let's see if fully upgrading the armor and then modifying the chassis does anything in terms of how many bullets it can take. And the answer is actually yes. So with the armor and the chassis upgrades applied, instead of the previous amount of bullets we could take, that amount has now increased to over 1,000. So I think that the Insurgent Pickup Custom ended up blowing up kind of close to around 8,925 rounds. So that's basically 1,075 rounds from a minigun that it can take before exploding. And I didn't really notice any difference between the two armor chassis. So once again, that really confirms that it's there just for aesthetics and for looks, but upgrading the armor itself will have a huge impact on how much damage this vehicle can ultimately take. So that right there is the Insurgent Pickup Custom. All right, and our final vehicle today is the Technical Pickup Custom. So this one is pretty exciting by default. However, it is a little bit underwhelming. So without any upgrades or anything like that, it can't even survive a single sticky bomb. It blows up with the first one. Same thing with an RPG, blows up with the first RPG that you fire at it. And as far as the minigun test goes, it can only survive around 250. 
50 rounds before ultimately blowing up. It might even have been closer to 225 before the minigun absolutely shredded this vehicle. So by default, it can't even survive one sticky bomb explosion and would get melted by something shooting at it pretty quickly. However, let's take a test at what would happen if you upgrade the armor and upgrade the plating on it as well. Is that going to have any difference with the technical custom? Unfortunately here, the answer is still no. So even with the armor upgrade and with the extra plating, it still was destroyed by one sticky bomb. Very disappointing there. Was still destroyed by one RPG. Again, very disappointing. And as far as the minigun test goes, it was pretty similar as well, surviving nearly the exact same amount. It might have survived about 40 or 50 more shots, but honestly, at that rate, that isn't giving you a whole lot of time to get away from the situation in which you need to you know, escape from if someone is shooting you or throwing RPGs at you or anything like that. So let's find out if there's anything salvageable about this vehicle. Well, what about the armor plating and bullet resistance? Unfortunately, it's the worst out of the three vehicles that we've taken a look at so far today. So with no armor plating at all, you can obviously shoot straight through. But even with all three tiers, the light, medium, and heavy of this armor plating, you still just burst right through the armor on the technical custom. So very disappointing here that it seems as if in all categories, the technical seems to be the worst out of these vehicles. The only thing it might excel in is price. But honestly, the difference might not even be worth it to justify buying a vehicle like this, especially if it doesn't really offer any perks. Everything you're getting for this car is simply cosmetic and doesn't enhance the vehicle whatsoever. So this may be a little bit of buyer beware for the technical custom, but I didn't really see anything too positive with it, especially in terms of its ability to protect you, which at the end of the day is what this vehicle would really all be about. And really the last thing I want to do, it doesn't really have to do anything with like a durability test or armor, but it might give us a better idea of why certain vehicles have the armor that they do. And it is a simple speed test. So I'm just going to be doing a drag test with these vehicles. Nothing really official here, but the results were pretty shocking. So by far the fastest vehicle is the Night Shark. It was well in ahead the other two with the Insurgent Custom at a kind of close second place. And then dragging way behind is the Technical Custom. Them. So the results here, pretty cool. Night Shark by far the fastest. Insurgent still pretty fast, but not lightning quick. And technical very, very slow. So with everything we've seen so far, the technical really doesn't have anything going for it. It's basically just a worse version of the Insurgent pickup. It's not as fast. It can't survive as many explosions. The gunner in the back isn't as well protected and it can't seat as many people. So I'm kind of scratching my head right now and saying, why would you choose the uh, technical custom over the insurgent pickup custom? The only thing and the only thing I could consider would be price. But I honestly don't think a price difference, at least if it's like under a million dollars, would justify you wanting to settle for something like the in, uh, technical custom over the insurgent custom. And then as far as the night shark goes in terms of how it compares to something like a normal insurgent, I think that it's on par. Yes, will it survive fewer rounds from like a minigun or an RPG or sticky bombs, but it is lightning quick way faster than the insurgent. So it's gonna be able to escape more situations than the insurgent will. So I think that these vehicles, minus the technical custom, are definitely gonna have their nice niche role into the new kind of a wilderness and ecosystem of online met with all these new weaponized vehicles. But really, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. Let me know which vehicle you like the best out of the unreleased ones that are gonna be added into Grand Theft Auto Online, hopefully within the next couple of weeks and months. Is it the technical, the insurgent, or the new Night Shark? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comment section down below. If you guys did go and enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you guys in the next video.